Hi, I'm Daniel Schachtman, and I'm a professor in the Department of Agronomy and Horticulture at the University of Nebraska-Lincoln, and also the director of the Center for Biotechnology. I'd like to tell you a little bit about a review article that my colleagues and I wrote recently for Trends in Plant Science. The review is on root structure and function and how roots may be altered using the tools of genetic engineering. The review is broken into three different parts, one on root structure, one on root phenotyping, and the third part is on root function. In terms of root structure, there's lots of variation that can be found in root architecture, uh, not only depending on whether a plant is a monocot or a dicot, but also root structure responds to changes in the environment and whether there's uh, water available or nutrients available. We have some corn here that we've pulled out of the field and you can see the corn has a much more fibrous root system um, and this is from a full nitrogen field here. It has some of these very long roots that reach very deep into the soil profile and then it has a lot of, in this case, in this field, it has a lot of these um, kind of more fibrous roots that are not as deep and you know these really deep roots will allow the corn to really go into the soil profile to find nutrients and to find water. So these are uh, same corn variety that I just showed a minute ago. Uh, these are the roots from a plant that was grown under low nitrogen conditions. You can see these roots are going down pretty deep probably going after water, maybe going after nutrients. Um, they're not as complex of a root system. There's just not enough carbon for these uh, plants to divert down to the roots to grow them deep. But you can see up at the top, again, there aren't very many brace roots here, um, but there are some of these fibrous roots here. Um, and these are probably pretty important for um, nutrient acquisition and then also water acquisition. The, in the second section we talk about root phenotyping and describe the methods that have been used over the years. More recently in the last five to ten years there have been many new methods. We're now able to image roots in 3D and lots of different medium but it's still very difficult to image, to, to get an idea of root structure using high throughput methods. In addition to what we can do in the greenhouse, it's particularly difficult to image roots and to quantify root structure in the field. And so for now, we're mainly stuck in the field with what Jonathan Lynch has called shovelomics, basically digging up roots, washing the soil off the roots, and then looking at the root architecture. The final area of the review is on root function. There it's hard to show pictures of how roots function, but it's really critical in terms of their role in taking up water and nutrients. So you can imagine all the nutrients in our, in our diets that come from plant-based sources or even animals that eat plant-based sources come from soils, are taken up by roots, and then translocated to edible parts. So uh, there have been a number of attempts to modify macronutrient uptake. Uh, those have been not so successful using genetic methods, although there are a couple examples recently in the literature of um, improved acquisition of phosphorus. However, there have been great progress on the uptake and, and tolerance to high concentrations of micronutrients. So in terms of iron uptake, we have a number of methods that we can use to modify a plant, a root's ability to take up iron. And then there's some really outstanding examples of uh, genetic mechanisms involved in aluminum tolerance, where in both corn and wheat, people have shown organic acid efflux um, molecules, transporters, are involved in tolerance. So on, in the future, the area of root microbe interactions will be a hot one to watch, 
There isn't a lot of data now. Uh, most of the studies in the past have been on rhizobium and mycorrhiza. In the future, I think we'll see a lot more uh, diversity in studying the microbes involved in root function. So we hope you enjoy the review and happy reading.